we are getting ready to talk about confirmations of the cyclohexane molecule. So far that we have talked about confirmations of straight chain alkanes, we've talked about the confirmations of ethane, propane, and butane. Before we start talking about the confirmations of cyclohexane, we have to learn how to draw a particular confirmation called the chair confirmation. So this video is going to only focus on teaching you how to correctly draw a chair confirmation. I'm not talking about how to draw a good looking chair confirmation. I'm talking about how to draw it right because there are uh, wrong ways to draw chair confirmations. So to help you visualize this, I want you to build a model if you have a model kit. Remember that cyclohexane is a six carbon cyclic molecule with all single bonds. And I want you to start, when you build this model, I want you to start with just the carbon atoms. No hydrogen atoms yet. It gets a little bit overwhelming if you've got your hydrogen atoms on it right away. So I want you to get six carbon atoms and I want you to put them together. And I specifically, um, when you get them put together, I want you to hold your model so that it looks the way that I'm drawing it right here. So I want you to hold it um, so that you're looking down on it. It's not probably not going to lay flat. It's probably going to be a little bit bumpy, and that's okay. We're going to talk about that. But I want you to hold it in this particular orientation where you have a flat bond uh, or a horizontal bond up at top and down below. Uh, so I don't want you to hold your cyclohexane so that it's like this. Don't hold it like that. I want you to hold it specifically like this, and I want you to look down on it as you're holding it um, so that it'll match up with what I've got in mole view. So when you're looking down on your cyclohexane, it should look kind of like this. This particular picture has the hydrogen atoms included, um, but you have hopefully not put your hydrogen atoms on yet. In this software, the carbon atoms are the light gray spheres. So just focus on those and ignore the white hydrogen atoms for now. And as you're looking down on your model, it should resemble this shape. And what I want you to do is slowly tilt your model up like this so that you're gonna be looking at it from the side. Now, I remember I told you that your carbon atoms are probably not gonna be flat because cyclohexane really doesn't wanna flatten itself out. They're gonna be a little bit bent up and what I want you to do is work with your, your six carbons, kind of twist and manipulate as you need to so that your six carbons match this same general shape or pattern. Meaning that on the left-hand side, you should have one carbon atom that's kind of pointing downwards. And then as you go to the right, you should have two carbon atoms, one in front and one in back that are kind of pointed up and continue on to the right, two more carbon atoms that are kind of pointed down, and then continue to the right, one carbon atom by itself pointed up. So you should get this, this zigzag pattern as you look from the side. We can actually draw, if we wanted to, we could draw a Newman projection for this particular molecule. It's kind of tricky to do. But I want you, again, I want you to just kind of, if you need to, pause the video and twist your bonds and flip your model around until you get it in exactly this particular shape as you're looking at it. Again, you don't have hydrogens on your, on your model yet. Once you get it just right, then I want you to move your, um, the way that you're holding your model, again, move it just a little bit so that you can see all six of the carbon atoms. So we're gonna kind of look at it like, like this. And in this position where we can see six, all six of the carbon atoms, this particular position is what we referred to as the chair conformation of cyclohexane. So this, what we're looking at right here, is what we need to learn how to draw. Um, so again, get your model so that it's just like this. And just kind of angle your perspective so that you can see all of the carbon atoms. And let's go back and let's tackle drawing this model. So I do, you know, when you're drawing a cyclohexane, it's pretty easy to draw some ugly cyclohexanes. So I do want to take a little bit of time to kind of teach you how to draw cyclohexanes nicely. Uh, we are going to start by drawing this carbon right here um, and this particular carbon-carbon bond. 
when you're looking at your model, and hopefully your model's not moving around too much, this carbon, which I'm going to number them right there, connects to this carbon right here, which I'll number two. And it's kind of um, angling down a little bit. And then let's go ahead and what I'm going to do next, because it's a little, sometimes it's easier to draw the ring in bits and pieces rather than drawing it continuous. What we're going to do next is draw these two carbons down here. So we'll call those carbons four and five. And this particular bond is going to run parallel to carbon bond between one and two. So we're going to put it kind of like this. And I have got it lined up like that, and it's also running parallel like that. So now we're ready to start connecting our ring together. Let's do, let's do carbon number six next, this guy right here. Carbon number six is over in this position. It is going to be lined up with carbon number four. So it's gonna be hanging out right around here when we draw it, like sort of in this area. It's gonna be like, say we put it out here, this might end up looking kind of bad. And then we're gonna connect it to carbon one and connect it to carbon five. And then let's do the same thing for carbon three which is this guy right here. Carbon three is gonna be lined up with carbon one, so it's gonna be somewhere out here. Um, we'll say it's gonna be right here. And then connect it. And that's, that's a decent cyclohexane. I, I should have um, made my these bonds a little bit longer to make its shape look a little bit nicer, but that's, that's okay. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna feel super bad about it. Um, so this is how we would draw a, a cyclohexane molecule. Now, the way that I've drawn it is sort of a, you know, lewis -y structure because I've shown the carbon atoms in there. So let's try again in just total line structure without drawing any carbon atoms. And let's go, again, we're going to start with our two one to two and four to five, those two lines, which are going to be running parallel to each other. And we wanna line them up like this. And then we want to connect those two lines together. So when we do this connection, this particular bond angle, when we draw it, is typically drawn, I feel like I need to extend these, make these a little bit longer. This, um, this particular bond angle is normally drawn at a 90 degree. So we're gonna go 90 degrees and we're gonna make that line go up until it's lined up with this particular bond and then connect it. And then same thing over on this side, this is gonna be 90 degrees and it's gonna extend down until it's lined up with this guy out here. So 90 degrees, extend it down and line it up. <laughs> It looks really bad because it's so big, but if we're drawing this a little bit smaller, it makes it look a lot cleaner. And let's go ahead and fill in those carbon numbers so you have that as a reference. There we go. Okay, so that's the general shape of the cyclohexane. So our next job is gonna to be to fill the hydrogens into the cyclohexane. And this is where students sometimes make a lot of mistakes because they're just like, oh, let's just throw some hydrogens on this guy and call it a day, and you can't do that. There is actually a right and a wrong way to put the, the hydrogens into a cyclohexane. So let's go back to our mole view. Um, and you may, you may want, at this time, you may want to go ahead and put hydrogens on your model. If you do that, let's, let's before you get excited and start putting hydrogens on your model, let's focus on just a few carbons at a time. So on your model, let's focus on carbon one, carbon three, and carbon five. And we're gonna go back to MoleView and look at just those three carbons. I can't 
highlight or you like use a laser pointer or anything on mole view. So you're gonna have to find those three carbons yourself. Um, it'll be easy to find this carbon over here because it's gonna be on the very right hand point. Now what I want you to do when you're looking at carbon one, carbon three, and carbon five in this model, is I want you to notice that all three of those carbons have a hydrogen atom that is pointing straight up. It gets, we're just focusing on the, they all have one hydrogen atom that is pointing straight up. And maybe on your model, you may wanna fill that hydrogen in for all three of these carbon atoms. So each one of them has a hydrogen sticking straight up. And I'm gonna draw that hydrogen in blue. They each have one that is sticking straight up. And when we draw the cyclohexane molecule, we draw it in a way that represents this particular hydrogen sticking straight up. Uh, that angle at which we draw this hydrogen absolutely must be straight up. You can't draw it like like this. It's got to be pointing straight up. Let's go back to mole view again and let's look at the other three carbons. So now let's look at six and two and four, focusing on like the left hand point and the other carbons. And let's take a look at their hydrogens. So if we look at carbon six, which is the left hand point, and then carbons two and four, notice that they all have a hydrogen atom that is sticking straight down. That is important as well. So let's go back to our drawing and maybe in your model, also show six, four, and two. They all have a hydrogen atom sticking straight down. Now you might be starting to notice a pattern as we go around the ring, starting at any point, we are alternating one hydrogen sticking straight up, a hydrogen sticking straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. That's a, that's a, a, a distinct pattern that we have to represent in the cyclohexane molecule. These straight up, straight down positions are called the axial hydrogens, or they don't have to be hydrogens, so they could be, they could be anything. And what's important that you notice here is that we have alternating, or as we go around the ring, alternating axial up and axial down um, on our carbon atom. So that's one key characteristic when we're drawing a cyclohexane. So let's keep looking at those same three carbons, two and four and six, and let's take a look at the position of their other hydrogen because they each have a second hydrogen on them. So this one's gonna be a little bit trickier to see, but we'll start, we'll start by looking at the left-hand point and see what the position of its other hydrogen is. So notice if we're looking at the left-hand point, its other hydrogen is sticking kind of off to the left hand side at a bit of an angle. It's up, but it's not straight up. And I'm going to turn this model so that you can see carbon four and carbon two. So first let's look at carbon four, which is the one in the front. Notice that its second hydrogen is also sticking up, but at an angle, not straight up. And now let's look at carbon two, which is in the back its hydrogen is also sticking up, but not straight up. So it's up, but it's at an angle. So let's draw that up, but at an angle. Up, but at an angle. So don't draw it straight up because then it looks like it's axial up. Draw it sticking up, but at an angle. And it's it, you have to draw it sticking up. Like you can't draw it just kind of sticking out to the side. It is a subtle up but it is up and you definitely can't draw it sticking down like that's totally not okay so you're drawing it up but at an angle like that now it's a little bit harder to know like for the inner carbons like this one should you draw it kind of pointing to the left or should you draw it pointing to the right and it's just sort of whatever you think looks prettier what matters is that it's up and it is at an angle so we're almost done. We need to look at carbon one, carbon five, and carbon three. We'll start by focusing on carbon three because that's the easiest one to find, the right-hand point. Let's take a look at that guy. 
And for that guy, his other hydrogen atom is also at an angle, but it's sticking down. So it's down at an angle. And I'm gonna rotate this so that you can see carbon number five, which is the carbon in front. His other hydrogen is down at an angle. And let's rotate it again so you can see carbon one, also down at an angle. So let's fill those guys in. Um, let me get a different color. Let's use purple. And for carbon three, down, but at an angle. For carbon number one, down at an angle. Carbon number five, down at an angle. These angled hydrogens, green and purple, these are called the equatorial hydrogens. And notice the pattern again. We are alternating again as we go around the ring, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. So we are alternating equatorial down and equatorial up. And this is not just because it looks good to draw it this way. This is because this is how the molecule exists. So you have to learn how to draw it correctly, meaning you have to learn how to draw it in this particular way. Not just the zigzag shape, but also correctly drawing all the hydrogens. Now, again, I want you to see the pattern when you draw a cyclohexane. You can start with any carbon atom you want, anywhere you want, as you go around the ring, you're gonna be alternating axial up with axial down, and you're also gonna be alternating equatorial down with equatorial up. Let's try just doing one from scratch. So we're making a cyclohexane template. And it doesn't matter how good of a cyclohexane drawer you are, you'll get better at it. Well, that one is so bad. I'm gonna start over because it looks really bad. It's hard to draw these when you're trying to draw them, when you're trying to do a good job. Okay, that one still looks pretty bad, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna feel bad about it. So once you've drawn your template for the ring, what I do is I pick a carbon, like maybe I'll pick this carbon right here and I'll go around the ring alternating straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, till I get back to my starting point. And on this starting point, since I already have one substituent pointing up, my next substituent on this carbon has to be pointing down because we have to have a, you know an alternating pattern. So we already have one up, that means our next one has to be down. We already have one straight, that means the second one has to be at an angle. So since this one is straight and up, our second one on this carbon has to be angled and down. Then we go angle up, angle down, angle up, angle down, angle up. And that is the correct template for a cyclohexane chair.